Hey, thanks for joining us for our last devotional uh, walkthrough here. Today we're going to be going through our uh, communion section of the Small Catechism. I'm Pastor Brad. And I'm Jonathan Orr. And uh, to kind of kick us off here, we want to really go back to the biblical connection of where communion comes from, kind of the text and the passages that we draw it from. And uh, I want you to take, kind of step back all the way to Holy Week and picture yourself on Monday, Thursday. So it's the day before Jesus dies, and he's gathering all his disciples in that upper room together, and they celebrate the Passover with one another. And you think about kind of the importance of this time, where this is the last few moments that Jesus has with his disciples before they go off to the Garden of Gethsemane, and before he's arrested. So this is critical in the time that Jesus has with his, with his disciples, because it's literally, the, maybe you would call it the last kind of few moments he has. So in this critical time, he gives the disciples this wonderful gift. So after this meal is over and they're kind of lounging around the table together, Jesus takes the bread, this unleavened kind of bread that he has from the Passover meal, and he gives thanks, and he breaks it, and he gives, gives it to all of his disciples, and he says, take and eat, this is my body. Then after that's handed out, he takes the cup that's also on the table from the Passover meal, and he says, take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And in this moment, He's done something incredible. He's given his body and his blood to his disciples. He's instituted or started this communion meal. And as we watch through scripture, we see this kind of drawn out even more. Uh, Paul talks in 1 Corinthians about this meal to uh, the gathered church at Corinth there. And this remembrance of Jesus, this celebration of this meal, this receiving of his body and blood, happens first in this upper room moves to the early church and goes out into all the world. It's one of the practices that the church takes with it no matter where it went. And now we find ourselves here today gathered around this same body and blood of Jesus. Right, so, so in our, our service today, when we have the service of, of Holy Communion, um, the pastor speaks the same words that Jesus speaks um, with, that he spoke in the upper room. It's, uh, it's, the, cause it's the power of the, that we have in the Word of God. We have the words of Jesus that give communion uh, uh, the benefits that it has and so when um, uh, so when the pastor speaks the words of institution when he speaks this is my body and this is my blood we recognize that as true and we see that um, in the service that he speaks it uh, the pastor speaks it right there and um, and so when we go up for uh, go up for communion we receive the unleavened bread and in with that unleavened bread we are receiving Christ's body and we when we go up to the altar we receive um, the wine um, either by an individual cup or through chalice, but the pastor spoke, this is my blood, and so we are receiving with the wine, Jesus' blood. And when we receive that, we receive the benefits that scripture talks about. We receive, um, we receive the forgiveness of sins. He says, do this uh, for the forgiveness of sins in remembrance of me. And so we get that forgiveness of sins, and we believe God's word to be true. We also have the uh, the body and blood give us they sh it strengthens our faith. We have this we have this uh, this renewal and the strength of, of faith that we that we receive through the body and blood of Christ. And we also have uh, uh, this connection, this fellowship of believers. When we receive it together, uh, like the disciples did in the upper room, we have that we have a connection. Where it's a, a, a statement of this connection of what we believe, and we have the strengthening of the fellowship of believers when we gather around the altar and receive the body and blood of Jesus. So there's a couple misconceptions about what communion is or the things that it does. And the first is kind of common to a lot of our American brothers and sisters. And again, as we stated in previous videos, uh, a doctrinal difference like this uh, doesn't make them lesser Christians or not Christians. But in fact, it's something that we can share as Lutherans, our excitement about what this meal is and what they're really getting when they gather around this meal. So it's something that I encourage you, if you have people who think that this is kind of a remembrance meal, to share this with them. Share this excitement that we have about what's actually present with them. But communion is not a remembrance of meal. It's when Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood, in a way that is beyond our understanding, it is. Uh, if you've been through a confirmation program, you've probably heard the phrase, in with and under, jammed in your head more times than you care to remember. But what we're essentially saying when we say Jesus is in, with, and under the bread and wine, it's not a formula for where he is or a place where we can point our microscope and see Jesus. But in fact, in, with, and under is simply saying he's somewhere in there. We don't quite know how it works. It's, it's a mystery. We don't know how God is present in our communion meal, but we confess that he's certainly there. So when we receive 
Jesus' body and blood in communion, it's not just a remembrance. While we are remembering Jesus while we do it, it's something so much more than that. Jesus physically comes to us. And a lot of you got to experience that kind of in a unique way uh, this last Sunday, where uh, when we took communion in our worship service, we asked you to take those communion ware, that cup that you received communion with, back home with you to dispose of reverently. And it's because this is so much more than body, or sorry, bread and wine that we receive, it's body and blood. So as we gather together, we receive these wonderful gifts of Jesus, and we reverently hand out the communion, we reverently hand out the wine, and then many of you experience that, we reverently dispose of what's left. Because it's uh, so much more than just bread and wine. It's not something like cleaning up dinner. It's something to be reverently handled and dealt with. Another kind of uh, misconception that a lot of us have is that every time we gather for communion, it's a time where Jesus is once again re-sacrificed. Uh, that comes from a lot of our Catholic brothers and sisters in the faith. Uh, what's important here is that uh, not that Jesus is re-sacrificed again and again and again, because the scriptures dictate that Jesus died once and for all, that all of our sins were placed upon Jesus' shoulder at his death, and all of our sins were forgiven, kind of that universal aspect of it. But what's important about communion is that it's a means of grace. It's a way that which God connects you to what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. So that death on the cross 2,000 years ago comes to you in a worship service through that confession and absolution, as we heard about last week, through your baptism, and now also through this body and blood of Jesus. This forgiveness comes to you in a time and space. So it's not a re-sacrificing of Jesus, but rather it's a connection back to what it is. And so, like, like Pastor Brad said, you know, we have communion is, and we confess that it is, a time and place when Jesus comes to us. And, and this is, uh, I think this is demonstrated to us beautifully in our divine service when we have, we, you know, when we start with the, with the service of the word and a time of reflection and a time of confession and absolution uh, where we recognize that we are sinners in need of a Savior. And, um, and, as this, and then as the service goes on, we learn about, uh, uh, about our Savior through the service of the word and we, we hear from scripture and, and through the sermon. Uh, and then we and then we and we confess uh, our beliefs together as a as a as a as a church, and then um, and then we go into uh, the, the service the service of Holy Communion where uh, again we have um, you know a remembrance of, of our sinful nature and our, our need for forgiveness and then and then we have this we we are able to because of what Christ did to us enter into the altar area we're able to enter the holy place where 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 God is dwelling in His His real body and blood in with and under the bread and wine he gives that to us again and then we receive we receive through that uh because of the because of his words because of what jesus spoke to us the forgiveness of sins uh the strengthening of our faith faith and and we have this unity uh and this confession of common faith and believers so the question that we always get asked is uh what does this mean to me why is this important why do we spend so much time focusing in on this and the first and foremost, it's a time to examine ourselves. We talked about in confession about you know, not lying about who we are, for truly looking at ourselves the way that we are, looking at our sins the way that we've fallen short, you know, those private sins that are kind of in the recesses of our mind or the things that we've actually done in kind of reality. Both of these uh, we take to God. And in confession and absolution, we receive forgiveness and absolution. And what's wonderful about communion is that it's a time to bring those sins again to receive that forgiveness, but also to receive the strength to continue being a Christian, to help grow our faith. The Holy Spirit uses communion to help us recognize that, yes, our sins are forgiven. We are children of God. and helps us kind of build on what the Holy Spirit is already building. It helps us grow in our faith. helps us to trust more and more in what Jesus has done for us. and also helps build us up as Christians living in the world. So it's a wonderful gift that God has given to us and as we gather together that, and we receive that communion, we've been apart from it for a while, it's a time that we grow into one another as we connect as a church. You know, there's this vertical element of communion where God comes to us, he gives us the forgiveness of sins, he strengthens our faith, but let's not forget the horizontal aspect of that. When we go up for communion kind of at a regular service, we're kneeling at a rail with our brothers and sisters in Christ around one common confession, around all of us saying together that we are sinful and in need of our Savior to save us. That's the statement we're making when we're all come together around that altar. And that's why communion is a community kind of based sacrament. Uh, communion is meant to be celebrated together. That's why we've been canceling a lot of our communion services. 
uh, not only for safety aspects of it, but this is a community meal for the church gathered together to make a confession together, uh, to be together in one building. This togetherness is an important aspect of our communion. So when we receive communion here at church, it's that growing into one another. It's that being forgiven, restored, and made the body of Christ, each and every one of us made a part of that together. And it's a wonderful reminder of that and a celebration of that. So as we uh, start coming back for worship, as we worship together, as we receive that communion, uh, I hope it up in the kind of the forefront of your mind that you have that forgiveness of sins, that strengthening of that faith, and that growing together as a congregation in your mind. Uh, but I'd like to close in, our, in prayer today uh, to pray for you as you go through this section in your small catechism and pray for us as a church as we gather together to hear God's word and to receive his gifts. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the sending of your son as he comes amongst us, as he gives us his body and his blood. Uh, we ask and pray that you would help us to trust more and more in the gifts that communion gives to us, namely that our sins are forgiven, that our strength is uh, that our faith is strengthened and that as a community we're brought together as church. Uh, be with us as we start coming back from uh, our lockdown, as we start celebrating this wonderful gift in our midst again. Uh, help us to really cherish it for what it is and the wonderful benefits that it brings to us in your church. Uh, bless us, Lord, as we continue to look through uh, your word and study your word uh, and help us as we walk through this catechism devotion. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us and blessings on your devotional readings.